Hello everyone. Welcome to today's event. Today we're going to be putting together another study formula from Labtorium, this time Allure Om from Chanel. I'm really looking forward to this one. Here I have all of the aroma chemicals and naturals that this particular formula calls for. Um, I've also got my scent strips ready to go. Remember the way I typically like to do these study formulas is I'll take my aroma families, fr uh, fragrance families like the musks, the sandalwoods, isoe super, uh, other woods, um, rosy, rosy florals, aromatics, white florals like jasmine, lily of the valley, then green notes like sterile acetate, um, citrus. I, I group them all together and I'll put them together in groups. And at every step, I'll dip a scent, a scent strip in. I'll smell what that accord smells like. Um, and then as I add them in, I will continue to dip, uh, smelling how each group affects the pyramid of um, the pyramid of the formula as we create it. So we are going to get started. First, per usual, we're going to start with our musks. Again, I'm using Formulaire, a wonderful, wonderful app created by Sam Macer, a perfumer in the UK. Um, <clears throat> and I will post a link to this formula in, uh, in, the, in the description. But we're going to start with Galaxolide. Now, this is Galaxolide heavy. When I'm all said and done, this formula will be at about 15 and a half percent fragrance oils and about 85 percent alcohol so pretty good concentration there i'm not sure what the original was but that's just the way i have my formula set up so we are going to start with galaxolide galaxolide according to this study formula is about nine percent of the of the juice at least of the the fragrance concentrate so we're going to start with galaxolide Actually, all of the musks in this particular formula are clean. They're not animalic. They're not dirty. And whenever I'm looking at a formula and the animalic content is relatively low, I'm immediately thinking that this is a newer fragrance, not uh, from the 80s, definitely not from the 70s or 60s. Next up, we have ethylene brassolate. Okay. Yeah, all of these smell wonderful. I recently heard that from another perfumer that um, sometimes a lot of musks are put together because some people can't actually smell some musks, but they can others. And so if you mix a bunch together, all that smell relatively similar, then there's a good chance that your consumer, the end consumer is going to at least pick up on some of those. I don't know how true that is. It sounds entirely plausible though. All right, exaltolide. There's just a splash of exaltolide or omega pentadecalactone. Sometimes it's fun saying the chemical names or they, some of these chemical names, um, even though this isn't the chemical name. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. We've got two more. Cashmirin and Habanalide. Now, oddly, I have Cashmirin in my setup classified as a musk. However, if I look at, I think it's IFF, it might be Ferminish, I'll have to double check, but if I look at, I've actually got a, hold on, let me, let me focus on this. Cashmere, how much? 0.094, one, two. All right, if I look on my screen, oh, I changed it, dang. I used to have a picture on my screen, and I think it was Ferminish or IFF, but it broke out a few of their key uh, fragrance chemicals into their various families. And I noticed they put cashmere in 
as an amber. Perhaps it was half amber, half musk. But I remember thinking, oh boy, maybe I have this misclassified. Whatever it is, it smells fantastic. All right, habanalide, last little bit. It's a good a bit. There's a good bit of habanalide in this. Spot on. Okay. Wonderful. Now I'm going to give this a little stir. I expect it to be thick. My galaxolide is a 50% galaxolide, 50% DPG. So it does take time. Sometimes it even takes some heat to, uh, to get these to mix. Why don't I, why don't I do this? Okay. We're going to let this rest for a hot second while we add in round number two. The second part of this will be the sandalwoods and we're going to do ISO E super. Now ISO E super for this formula is about almost 14% of the fragrance concentrate. Now again, I now this ISO E super is 100%. Um, it is not diluted. So I only need maybe seven or eight drops of this. It's a pretty heavy molecule. Well, I underestimated. Maybe need more. Ooh, perfect. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so we got our ISO. What I also like to do is just set these aside as I complete it so I don't uh, accidentally double dip. Okay, Osiral, a recent acquisition, Osiral. This is something I actually had trouble smelling. I'm going to give it a little test. I had trouble sniffing this when I first picked it up. I'm going to give that a break. So let's try again. It is a sandal woody material. I picked it up because if I remember correctly, this was an ingredient in one of the first fragrance studies formula studies that I did and I did not have it. I think it was, uh, I can't remember if it was Guerlain's vetiver or, um, or YSL, um, there, what is it? Live YSL Y, Y E D P. But oh, let's see, let's see. Hmm. That's, that's calm. It's very subtle. I'm going to let that chill for a bit. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll be able to smell that a little later. It's funny. Sometimes I give it 30 seconds to a minute. I can't smell it, but I come back after an hour and then I can start smelling it. I remember musk, musk ketone. My first time trying to smell musk ketone. I could never smell it immediately off the strip. I always had to give it a half an hour or an hour. All right. Paul Santal. Now I should note, I have some substitutions in here. There are I think two or three substitutions because I didn't have everything on the in this study formula. I didn't have globa is it globa scone? No. It's a galbanum. Galbascone, perhaps. It is a galbanum. Oh, I would just want to know. What am I replacing you with? Cyclogalbinate. I don't have cyclogalbinate. I also didn't have mate absolute. So I'm doing some replacements there. But let's get back to our sandalwood. We've got sandalore. Just a little bit of sandalore. Sandalore, I do enjoy. I can smell this one pretty easily. Yeah, can smell that one pretty easily. It's not quite like Bactanol or Ebanol, which to me is a little more of a straightforward sandalwood note, but um, 
but it's still there. Sandella, another one that is pretty chill. Pretty straightforward. There's a good bit of Sandella in this, Sandella 85. Actually, uh, Sandella 85 is also a replacement. Sandella 85 is 85%. I think it's Santel, Santelif or Santif. Uh, I'll have to double check that. But it's 85% uh, fragrance molecule, 15% isopropyl, um, it's IPM. Um, this fragrance formula calls for just the, the, the pure molecule, but don't have that. So Sandella will have to do. All right, next up, we're going to do a little Ambroxan. There's just a splash of Ambroxan. Literally one drop's worth, and I'll probably overdose it in this. Yep, overdosed it, but that's okay. <clears throat> what I love about these, these sample formulas, these study formulas, is that especially as you're looking through formulas, if you're looking at formulas through time, you can start to see how, well, you, you see the evolution. I mean, in this, this was released in the 90s, and it's still, it's galaxolide-based, it's sandalwood-based, There's it's iso-e super, and there's hedione, but there's a hint of ambroxan. And I wonder if a perfumer out there was just like, you know, this Ambroxan stuff's pretty solid. Why don't I try overdosing this or make use this as the base? And then that leads to a new a new style or a new set of uh, of fragrances. I recently did another study of a 90s fragrance that also just had a hint of ambroxan. It was used as a, <clears throat> almost as a modifier rather than a core ingredient. Okay, sandalwood, musks, <clears throat> solid. Classic, classic pairing, as they say, like wine and cheese. Absolutely classic. Just a nice, sweet, woody base. Next up, we're going to get to four other materials. I don't have Mate Absolute. I looked at the description of what it smelled like and thought that Tobacco Absolute might be a, a reasonable replacement. Um, this study formula also asked for vetiveral acetate. I thought I'd go a little fancy and do some vetiver bourbon. So, uh, and ah, funny, this is, the, uh, this is the replacement bunch. It asks for Coumarin. And I thought, well, I've got Tonka Bean Absolute I haven't used in a minute. I'm going to use some of that. So this is what we are going to do. First up, though, is our Patchouli Absolute. And I'm a large fan of patchouli. At least nice, clean, rich patchoulis. 0.094. All right. Hmm. I must say, <clears throat> dark patchouli from Indonesia is probably my favorite. But patchouli absolute will do just fine. All right, tobacco absolute. Just made this dilution. This is nice and dark. Whew. Look at that. When I first got the Tobacco Absolute, it was not what I expected. But it, actually, at this dilution, it is exactly what I expect. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All right, Ryan. Noted. Noted, Tobacco Absolute at 10% is more of a, it's like you're smelling a cigar. It's that sweet tobacco-y. Ooh, I love cigars. Okay, vetiver bourbon. Ooh, good dose of vetiver here. Wonderful. I wonder if this will brighten up the woods just a little bit. I like the way that vetiver kind of brightens woods without necessarily drying it out. Because to my nose, at least the way I associate smells, cedrine, cedar wood will also brighten up woods, but it, it dries it out. 
and I just really appreciate a good vetiver. It's, it can be so versatile. <clears throat> Think of those fragrances like Guerlain vetiver or Ra Raja, uh, Raja Parfums vetiver. <clears throat> then think of Grey vetiver. Then think of Terre de Hermes and Encre Noir à la Extreme. It's that vetiver is there, or even uh, original vetiver uh, by Creed. It's it, the vetiver is there, but it's it's um, it's used. They're used in a unique fashion. It's just it's very cool. All right, here we go. Now the Tonka bean, got to adjust this. 0.18 because this is a 50 per, this comes as a 50 percent dilution okay 0.18 fair bit of tonka bean in this now interestingly if you've smelled chanel's allure om it's a little peachy it's it's very nice it's musky you get that musk dihydromersinol kind of punch in the nose at least that's the way i associate it and it's peachy but there's no so-called peach aldehyde in here nada which i find fascinating all right we're going to give this a mix it's got a nice color so far love the color let's smell it i'm going to let this sit and then while before I smell it, I'm going to remind myself, what does a sandalwood and musk smell like? Smells like sandalwood and musk. Clean. Smooth. Nice. Very, very nice. All right. So in here, we've added our patchouli, vetiver, tonka bean, and tobacco absolute. Let's see what kind of color it adds. Tonka bean definitely comes through, but it rounds really nicely with the patchouli. Ooh, okay, noted. So if we're taking basically one part tonka bean absolute, one part patchouli absolute, just, and then two parts vetiver. Ooh, the vetiver is starting to come through. Ah, oh, boy, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Next up, let's just keep pushing. We've got our rosy materials, our citronellol, or citronellol, citronellol, citronellol acetate, geranium, geranol acetate, amyl salicylate, damascanone, total and alpha damascone just for a little extra sweetness. I thought of adding some nutmeg to this particular setup, but I'm going to save nutmeg. I know that when you're, when I'm using uh, rosy type materials, there's always a little bit of clove or a little bit of eugenol that helps just give that rose a little extra, a little extra something. But I noticed there's nothing that doesn't exist in this particular formula. So interesting. All right. Citronellol. If, oh, if anyone has confidence on how to say that properly, please let me know. I am all ears. Is it citronellol or is it citronellol? I could probably Google it. Okay. Almost a tenth of a gram, just shy. It is interesting that if you want a rose note, but you don't want to use rose, you can literally just use citronellol alone and that can give you a rose note all right citronellol acetate much less of this 0.019 all right all done moving on so the citronellol citronellol acetate in Let's smell this one more time. Whoa. Interesting that the tonka bean, the coumarin, gives it almost a wetness, a dampness. It's very interesting. Still can't get the Osiral. Well, keep trying. All right, next up, geranium. Okay. 
geranium. Pretty strong geranium oil from Egypt. This is a pretty strong but beautiful material. And four drops is spot on point. Five, six grams in this formula, geranium acetate. I love the acetate versions of so, of so many of these materials. It's like the material, but just with a little more fullness or dankness. <laughs> uh, like that vinegar is just trying to keep creep in. You know, like it's wine that's just, it's trying to spoil. All right, then we've got, we'll do our amyl salicylate. Though I haven't, I haven't quite figured out where the salicylates belong in this method of putting together fragrances, formulas. Sometimes it feels like a modifier. Other times it feels like the absolute core of the fragrance. Take Kenzo. Poor Om. That stuff is like 25% benzyl salicylate. And benzyl salicylate is such an important ingredient. And amyl salicylate is such an important ingredient in the barbershop style fragrances. So I don't know, but, it, but they have such an effect on, if you were to add that one last, it would have such an effect on all the stuff underneath it. So to me, it feels like it's a modifier. Uh, a modifier or a blender, but I guess that's why I do this to keep to keep learning. Okay. Okay. Ran into a weird a curveball. Damascanone total is at ten percent, but I don't have the dilution written down, so I need to write that down here in my bottle. All of these are 10% unless otherwise noted. Uh, and then I have alpha damascone, but I have it at 1% here. Where are you? This, is in. this formula is in alphabetical order. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Hello. Nope. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Where are... Here we go. Okay. Oh, it's by weight. It is not. Alpha damage going 10%, so I need to drop that to 1%, so we are okay. All right. Phew. I thought I was going to have to do some off-the-cuff math. It's not a terrible thing, but... All right. So we've got two more ingredients, and then we are going to give this another test. So we're going to start with a damascanone total, 0.38. That's a pretty good dose, if I'm not mistaken. Damascanone, damascanone and damascones are strong. They add, for the most to my nose, they really add a deep, fruity, rich, fruity element to the fragrance. They don't want to overdose this. A little bit there. Last up, alpha damascone. Just one drop. One drop at 1% is all we need. Nice, ooh, fruitier. Definitely fruitier and brighter, alpha damascone, than a damascanone. Okay. Again, wonderful color. I love the, I love that rich golden color of these. Not only does it smell good, it looks wonderful. Okay. And let that chill. Remind ourselves, what does the base smell like? Musk, sandalwood, patchouli, vetiver, tonka bean, and tobacco absolute. That coumarin in the tonka is just forward. That's lovely. All right, let's give our rosy smells a smell. Okay. Definitely citronolol heavy. 
geranium heavy. That's nice. It's rich. It's sweet. It's like a deeper rosy smell. It's a deeper rosy smell. I've noticed as I'm doing this, as we build from the ground up, a lot of these fragrances smell very similar within the first three layers. The musks, the woods, the rosy materials, you know, citronellol, geraniol, etc. They all smell quite similar. And then once you get to that mid, that heart section, the game starts to change depending on what your aromatics are, what your herbals are, uh, your spices. That's when things start to change and things get interesting. So we are going to move on to that category where we have nutmeg. I have linalool here because we have some lavender and uh, linalool acetate, which I think those just boost the lavender, um, the, uh, the lavender in the formula. So without adding more lavender, you just you add some lavender and then some linalool, linalool acetate, and uh, bam, you've got more lavender. But we're going to start with anethole. And it looks like we're just going to need one drop of this. And this is licorice. Licorice or fennel. Yeah. Not going to overdo that. I can imagine if you overdose that one, you're... you're a lure um is going to go weird really quickly. Let's add nutmeg next. And this is only a few drops for this formula, for how I have it weighted 0 .03, 0 0.038 grams. Three drops is perfect. Nutmeg is nice, a little spicy, a little peppery, a little fresh. A very nice one. We'll save the dihydromersinol for last. Let's do our lavender. <clears throat> this actually asks for clary sage. My clary sage is going bad. <laughs> so I don't want to use it. So I'm going to use some, I'm going to use a couple different kinds of lavender in this, but uh, no biggie. Okay. Lavender, almost 0.1 grams. Always throwing away pipettes. <clears throat> now the Bulgarian lavender I have. There's more. Ooh, I'm getting that lavender smell from here. Nice. Done. So this will be nice and lavendery. <clears throat> linalil, linalil wall. Almost a gram, just over a gram. Okay. Should uh, oh, about need a refill. Yep, got that refill. Think I should have enough though. I like linalool for how fresh, straightforward, but like metallic it is. It's just, <clears throat> it kind of zings that nose, it zings my nose a little bit. Linalool acetate, again, love the acetates because it's linalool that's just a little meatier, <laughs> a little beefier, and just a few more days from being funky. If it were, uh, if it were aging wine, it would just be like a week away from going bad or from turning into vinegar. That's how I liken it. But wonderful. It gives it a little more of a green aspect. Makes it more green. Last up, dihydromersinol. I'm going to double check this. <laughs> dihydromersinol. It's saying is 17% of the formula. And I don't doubt that. I just want to make sure dihydromersinol. No, dihydromersinol is the largest ingredient in this formula. But I brought, I grabbed the wrong dilution. I've got a 1% dilution. I need to grab a 10% dilution. So, dihydromersinol. Here we go. All right, 
work your magic in this roughly 13 gram formula test that I'm making. 17% is dihydromersinol, 3.375. Do it. If you're getting started in perfumery, just go ahead and buy a lot of dihydromersinol. <laughs> it's in everything. Even when you don't expect it, it's often in there just a touch, maybe to help the fragrance pop to help it just throw a little bit more. It's the, it might be there. Okay. Whoo. I'm getting that. I can smell that. <clears throat> Here we go. Aromatics number five. And we've still got our white florals, Jasmine Lily Owl. We have our stereoacetate dinoscone, what was supposed to be cyclogalbanone. Then we have our citrus, our aldehydes, and then we're going to finish up with hedione. So let's give this a little mix. Dip, and we let it set, go back to the roses. Okay, ooh, the roses have calmed down. I'm sorry, the sharpness of the citronellol, uh, the geraniol has calmed down a little bit. It's blended a little bit more with the, uh, the woods and musks underneath. It's, it's softer, more straightforward, it's rich. It's like a golden red color that comes to mind. So what happens when we've got the aromatics and the herbals and the dihydromersinol? Right now, it's almost completely covering up the uh, citronellol. So let's move on. We'll let that chill out while we add not Jasmine Absolute or Jasmine Sombac. I've got Jasmine Specialty. Much less expensive. And holy cow, does it still smell pretty darn good. Okay. But it's just a splash. Wow, look at that just a splash, maybe one or two drops. Now what I'm expecting this to do, especially with dihydromersin, well, at least with the, with the, uh, the rose like florals is that Jasmine, Lilial, Magif, Floral, those kind of white floral, Lily of the Valley materials really help to round off and smooth out some of the sharper edges that exist in some of these other materials. Okay, we've got almost 0.2 grams. Okay. We're gonna give that a mix and we're gonna dip it. We're gonna see if this has a noticeable effect. That dihydromersinol is strong. That is strong. Okay. Give that a dip. Let that chill. We're going to go back to the aromatics. One stage back on this pyramid. Okay. Once that dihydromersinol drops down a little bit, the lavender, the linalool, linalool acetate starts to come through. Supported by the citronellol and the, and the geranium. It's nice. At this point, it's clear we're on the path to making a cologne, a uh, like, you know, something, something masculine. <clears throat> Let's try the jasmine and the lily out. We're going to let that set just a little bit longer. I'm still getting that ethanol feel in my nose and I do not want that. So next up, we've got the dinoscone. Now this stuff is strong. I've got a 1% dilution. It's green. It's fresh. Let me try it. I thought of instead of using this, just using galbanum oil or galbanum resinoid. We're going to see. I'm not certain that I'm, I don't know what the effect this is going to have because we, there's only one drop of this in here. Now, when it was asking for cyclogalbonate, and I'm going to leave this out when it was asking for cyclogalbonate, um, it was a 10%, I believe. 
me look. It's a 10%. Mm. Yep. 10% um, concentration. So I might have to up the Dynascone, but we'll see. Stir a little acetate. Nice green note. Again, just need a couple drops of that. Probably should have added this with the rosy type materials because that greenness just helps. Um, helps with a more realistic rose smell, rose accord. Let's smell this Dynascone again. Hmm. We're going to meet in the middle. Going to meet in the middle. <clears throat> Let's update this. All right. So the greens are in. Still can't smell the Osiro. It's all right. Maybe it'll take a year. <laughs> a year of constant smelling for my nose to learn. Hey, you're supposed to be able to smell this. I've heard that happens with, uh, with new aroma chemicals, with like new musks, for example. Sometimes it just takes reps and then your brain's like, oh, hey, I've come into this before. I, I better start smelling this or, you know, I need to get used to this smell. Let's go back to the aromatics. Remind ourselves what that is like. It's a fresh, fresh geranium smell. The jasmine lily owl. Lighten it up only a touch. It is so subtle. It's there, but it is very subtle. We're going to let our the greens, the sterile acetate, and the dinoscone chill out for a second on the strip and we are going to get to well, this is an alphabetical order i don't want that i want category bergamot we're going to start with bergamot there's plenty of bergamot in this and um i'm using bergamot jivco i've got i've got italian bergamot but uh i need to use up some of this jivco stuff and uh in general it's pretty solid it works pretty darn well so no harm no foul now we've got almost two grams of this magic sauce, so let's do it. All right, that should brighten it up a fair bit. Bergamot, down. Next up, citral. Let's do some citral. Ooh, only a drop or two of citral. Getting close to needing to swap out my citron. Occasionally what I'll do, actually what I've started doing is dropping a little bit of BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene into uh, <clears throat> some of the more volatile, the volatile materials to help prevent oxidation, or at least help slow oxidiza oxidation. Oxidization? I think it's oxidation. But my citral is not far away from needing to be replaced. At least this dilution needs to be replaced. All right, tangerine. And then lemon. Ooh, there's plenty of lemon. Interesting. All right, tangerine. Let's get this out of the way. Almost. <coughs> A tenth of a gram. Good. Lemon. Okay. One and a half full grams of lemon. Today we are using Californian, our lemon from California, rather than the fancy Italian or Sicilian lemon I've got. The California stuff's pretty good. All right, one and a half. All right, we are almost done with this blend. <clears throat> it 
Let's give it a mix. We are going to go back and smell the green stuff after we dip this. But we're going to add citrus. Hmm. It's starting to take shape as a lure on. Here, it's, you can tell it's headed in this direction, but when I add the stereolacetate in the dinoscone, should be cyclo, cyclogalbanone, but it's, or cyclogalbanate, but we're using dinoscone. It's, but it's clearly moving in the, in the uh, allure om direction. That in your face, rosy musk slash dihydromersinol. Because I remember smelling it for the first time. I felt like I was karate chopped in the nose with dihydromersinol, rose, or geranium, and, um, and that, you know, that musk, that musk base. Um, so let's try. Let's see what the citruses add. A lot of brightness. Completely hides the, the heart. Ah. And then that dies down and we start to get into, okay, the heart. So we'll do the aldehydes. Now we have aldehyde C10, uh, we have helium al, um, and then we've got another uh, sweet top note, allyl amyl glycolate, a little bit fruity. We're going to start with the allyl amyl glycolate. And it's just going to be two drops, maybe a drop and a half. Let's see how heavy my drops are coming in. Yeah, we'll do two. We'll do fine. Set that aside. We'll do our helional point. One, ooh, fair bit of helional. Okay, almost two tenths of a gram. Last up, aldehyde C10 or decanal. And it's just gonna, and this is a 1%, this is gonna be just one or two drops. Should hopefully let this sparkle. Okay. I'm gonna actually mix this with a pipette, stir with a pipette. Gonna dip. We'll let that chill. Let's go back to the spot in the pyramid where we've added our base, the woods, the geranium and citronolol, uh, the lavenders, the jasmine and lilial, and then we have the greens, the sterile acetate and the dinoscone. And again, at this point, you're starting to smell that this is definitely going in the direction of a lure om. Citrus. <sighs> that lemon and bergamot really brighten that up. That's very nice. Aldehydes. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. It's as if it takes the citrus on top, that sharp lemony zing, and it's like it smears it. It smears it side to side and up to down, so it blends just a little bit better in with the stuff below it. And it gives it a creaminess, a waxy creaminess. Just, I shouldn't even say waxy, but that smoothness. Wow. That is interesting. That is very nice. All right, last bit, hedione. There's a ton of hedione in this. I mean, it's not uh, Baccarat Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's 14% of this concentrate is hedione. So we're going for roughly 0.28 grams at 100%. Here it is. I thought about swapping out Carismol, Carismol, or Hedione HC, one of those, but... I should do this first and then 
and then and then try swapping it out give that a stir let our heady own get in there all right i'm excited for this last the last scent strip i'm going to let this chill I'm going to get a bottle because we're going to put this in one of these bottles. I'm also going to grab a five milliliter sample vial. We're going to still let this chill out while I load this up. So what I'm going to do is I will put this on my skin today just to smell the difference between what it's like on a strip and what it is like on my skin. Then I'm going to let it sit. And I'm going to try this again in a week because in a week it is going to feel different. It is going to smell a little different. It's just going to be different, smoother, more blended, whatever it is. Something about it sitting for a bit just helps, helps it come into its own. All right. Wonderful. What I'll do with the leftovers here is I will continue to refill my test bottle and if I want to explore a little bit I now have the end fragrance here I can split this up into other like smaller samples and I can start adding things like what would this smell like if we actually did add so-called peach aldehyde or what is it, aldehyde c16 um, one of those what would happen if we added one of those c14 my bad aldehyde c14 Gamma undergalactone. <clears throat> All right, let's give it a whiff. Wow, kind of the final touch. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with what Hedion does, boy, it, it takes the entire fragrance, just lifts it up in the air, gives it a it gives it a nice bright cloud around the top, brightens it just brightens it up. This is wonderful. And it's pretty darn close to Allure Om. It's pretty darn close. I wore, that was my signature scent for four months during the initial COVID lockdowns. So whenever I smell this, I think of going on walks with my then one-year-old boy while everyone was locked down. It smells wonderful. It smells wonderful. So what did we learn today? First, the musks smell great musks always smell great especially the clean white musks add in some sandalwood you've got yourself a solid easy smooth base we add in patchouli vetiver tonka and some tobacco the tonka kind of takes over at least in this fragrance the coumarin takes over adds the most color to what we currently have but we're building you know we're building a pyramid here so I feel like as we build the pyramid, you know, there are spots in the pyramid that are brighter than others. Next, we have the geranium, geranium citronellol, um, the citronellol acetate, uh, um, citronellol acetate, amyl salicylate, and then the uh, damascone and damasconone. And this adds a meaty heart to the fragrance. It's, it's rosy, but without the sharpness the sharp ping or zing you get with rose. And what I understand now through doing this is that if you don't have that sharp zing in the rose smell, you need less of the jasmine materials to help carve that off or to help sand that down. Because if we had a really edgy rose, you can add some floral or, or, or magif or whatever, lilial, and it would really calm down and round out and smooth out that kind of harsh rose. Aromatics, herbals, adds a nice lavender, a nice herbality to that core rose smell. Jasmine, Lilial, it's so subtle, but it just lightens it up. 
just a touch, smooths it out, lightens it up just a touch. When we add in the stereoacetate and the dinoscone, at this point for my brain, I'm like, oh, we're headed towards Allure Um. Brightens it up just a little bit. The citrus, yeah, just adds a zing. Brightness and zing at the top. While the aldehyde C10, helionel, and allyl amylglycolate. As I said, it's as if it smears the top together. It's like a watercolor or watercolor pencils where you paint specific lines and then you take a, a wet paintbrush and then you blend it over and they all kind of bleed together a little bit. That's what this reminds me of. And it gives it a slight creaminess. The hedion does the hedion thing. <laughs> Puts a cloud on top, rounds it off, makes it bright, pushes it out, smooths it out. So I'm going to put this on my hand. We're going to let that chill. And um, we're going to try this again soon with a different fragrance. Wow, that's pretty close. That's pretty darn close to Allure Om. Wow, okay. Great study formula. Highly recommend it. I'll post a link to the webpage to uh, Labtorium. Um, you do need a free account to access this, but uh, you know, do yourself a favor. Create an account, download this form, this study formula, whip it up, and put it together the way that um, you think you might learn best. If it's one at a time, dipping a new scent strip every single time you add a new, a new material, go for it. Um, I would do that. I'm just constricted on time, so I've chosen to break it out by fragrance family. Smells great. Give it a try, and. Thanks for joining me.